Here's the mommy of our youngest uh, chef. I shall play you. Hello. We are right here. In Madison, Madison Blue. Hello, hello, aspiring chefs. Today we're in a very beautiful venue because we are going to have uh, C Networks and Philippine Chef Society's um, kitchen tour. The very first ever that Radisson Blue is opening its kitchen to the public. The tour is going to be guided by the area chef of Radisson Blue in Middle East and Africa. He used to work as an executive chef of Radisson Blue in Abu Dhabi, in Petersburg, in, in Kuwait for the past 19 years now. So please meet our chef executive, our area chef, Chef David Arnois. Morning, Chef. Morning, how are you doing, guys? Good, good, thank you. Moment, thank you. Thank you for, great. Hello, thank you for you. having us here. Are you a chef or so? <laughs> yeah, they are. they are. Entering the kitchen, he has a horse. And a kitchen. How do you feel right now? You're entering the kitchen in secret. The kitchen of Rasmussen. <laughs> are you even seen on my camera? I yes. <laughs> it's a long hallway. Wait. Your mom's on No, actually. <laughs> Uh, first, what I'm going to try to explain is a little bit like how does the product come into the kitchen. I don't know if you've done that already, but uh, obviously in the Radisson here, um, it's very systematic. So nothing comes in from the front door, nothing comes in. Uh, everything is checked and rechecked and before it comes into the kitchen. So there's a lot of processes before it actually arrives to us in the kitchen. So everything comes through this door at the back over there. We have the purchasing office, which is the second door. The first door is where everything comes in and is checked for weight. Weight, and if it is a fresh product, the temperature. Uh, if it is a frozen product, the actual temperature, so that it is below, below 18, yeah? Um, then after that, it starts coming down this way. So now this door here is where all the vegetables are washed, washed and sanitized. So inside these little rooms here, everything is washed and sanitized. And if we have any peeling, anything like that to be done, it's done in this room. Uh, all the dirty stuff goes into the back corridor. We have a second corridor behind, which we call the dirty corridor. It's where we have all our um, garbage going past, so nothing comes through here which is not clean and sanitized. Right. So it's very yeah, organized. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, here then we start storing items. So if we go through, it's always, it starts like this. So here we have the beverage. Here we have just the cheese. This is only for cheese and milk product. And milk, basically. Cheese. Oh, this is the dairy fridge, yes. Yeah. Then we have the, uh, the store, our store. So it's also controlled, it's climate controlled and humidity controlled and everything. So it goes inside here for the store. And then we have two freezers. We have meat and meat product. And here we have, on this side we have ice cream and here like french fries and things like this. So that's, that's the only thing. But everything is split, everything separated. So when we have a new openings, we go together and we're going to open, we're going to help uh, other hotel to open nicely. Uh, so this side is a pastry, so it's a fish finishing area. Yeah. And then behind there, that door, we have a huge fridge and huge freezer. Mm -hmm. On this side here, you see preparation area. So everything which is mixer, blenders, come, come closer, you can actually also see. So you have everything which is to do with bread. So at the back over there, we, you can see there's an oven over there, it's a rotating oven. Uh, it's to cook evenly, it's mostly for bread. Uh, next to it, on the left hand side, it's a proving uh, chamber. So that's where we make all our bread. We make all our bread, everything is made in house. Okay, we don't buy anything. So, he will prepare, he's a baker, he's one of the bakers, I have three bakers. Uh, he will prepare the, the door during the night. And then after that, it gets uh, it gets split, so it gets proofed and then cooked. Mm -hmm. Then we have a three deck oven, which is much much more accurate. Everything will be produced here, then goes into the fridge, okay. and then all uh, we have six different restaurants. Mm -hmm. So it gets it gets split up to all different restaurants. Okay. Uh, they come to pick up or they go set up. So some of the things is for a la carte. 
so that means it's all plated. Mm -hmm. And some of the things is for buffets. So we do a lot of weddings in the weekends. During the week will be a lot of uh, conferences. So we can take up to one and a half thousand people. We can do up to two, two and a half thousand meals wow. uh, a day in here. So it's uh, including breakfast. Uh, let's say, for example, this morning we'll do probably about 350, 400 breakfasts. Thank you, Chef. And then it carries on. What is the validation date for this? The it's three days. Last three days. days. Three days maximum. So base, it depending on on the product, you know. If it's a cream, if it's a cream-based product, we don't like to keep it more than two days. Oh, because of the uh, Yeah, it's. But it's also very much controlled. But the way it works is actually quite simple. A cake is based on maybe four basic elements. So you might have a sponge, you might have a cream, it can be a creme pâtissière, uh, you might have the decoration, and uh, you might have the sauce that goes with it. It's not like we make a cake and then we finish, we go to the next cake. It doesn't work that way. Okay, shall we go to the main kitchen? But the main kitchen, we're not gonna stop, okay? Because there's a lot of uh, act there's a bit more action and it's not uh, it's a bit hot. Yeah, each restaurant has an individual kitchen. This is one of the kitchen of a, quite a one of the famous restaurants in Kuwait. Uh, it's called a Peacock. It's a Chinese restaurant. Seven chefs working in the kitchen, and everything is very much split. So they have the cold section, they have the hot section, and then they have the duck and the uh, duck and frying station. So everything comes through the micro system it's a system where the waiter type types it in you see sometimes they go into a thing and it comes to the docket so all the numbers comes out they read it this guy prepares the preparation and i've got two guys just cooking all they do is cook so in total in the, in the hotel we have 70 chefs 70 chefs seven zero and Running 30 stewards yeah. okay so <laughs> In total, we basically are 100 people in the kitchen, in the radisson. So here, this room out here, is where we cut uh, all our vegetables. So any vegetable is cut in here. So everything comes through this door at the end, and we have another door on this side. On this side, we have the first freezer, was the fish freezer, we have a meat fridge, we have a poultry fridge, and then we have the vegetable fridge. So everything comes from that side, goes to here, comes out here. So it never cross. We never see a dirty product and a clean product crossing. So avoid cross contamination. Cross contamination, that's to avoid it, yes. So now we're getting into the heart of the kitchen basically, it's a main kitchen. That's a room service area. Room so service. when you order from your room, there's an area like this, where there's an office, they get the order, they prepare the tray, they get the food from the kitchen, and they go to the room. Uh, from the main kitchen, we produce all your food for banquets, buffets, nothing from a la carte comes from there. Of course, you have to say that canteen, we have 400 employees in the hotel. So 400, there's breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Uh, we do 16 main courses for the lunch and for the dinner. So those guys are very, very busy. Because we cook for different, all different nationalities, obviously. Here is what, where all the cold kitchen. So that's a cold kitchen. The temperature inside is at 14 degrees. What is the relative humidity inside? It's about, it's about 50%. Product here are very, very dangerous. If we don't play, if we don't control them correctly, we can have problems. How about chef for the full bar? We have a separate kitchen. Separate kitchen. Totally separate kitchen. So they come, they get their product here, they prepare everything down there. Anything else, a la carte, every single restaurant has got their own kitchen. So that's the end of the kitchen basically. So anything dirty goes through the back. Never to the kitchen. That's why we have a system a lot, a lot of doors. Yeah. Welcome to the Radisson Viking Club. I've been here several times. Oh my God, this is the typical Filipino uh, umbrella. On any day, any season.
Come rain or shine. Maria, is it your first time to be on a tour with the chefs? Yeah. Yeah, me too. My very first time. My second time wearing this uh, chef jacket. Is this steak and seafood restaurant? Albu. Hindi pato, yung mas malaki pato, yung hashimi. Yes. I love shrimp. You're the only one, yeah? I know. So this is basically, this is one of our restaurants. This is called the Album. Album is a steak and seafood restaurant, as you can see, seafood. Everything we serve here is fresh. And everything we serve on meat quality, it's only Angus beef. So I don't know if you heard about Angus beef. Yeah. Angus, uh, we only serve Angus uh, coming from the States. Most of the seafoods are local. So we have, obviously we have fresh amu, fresh balul, uh, but we also do things like salmon, sea bass, uh, obviously live lobster. We have also Omani lobster coming. Uh, we sometimes have specialty like oysters. So we'll have live oysters inside the tank. Here what they will do, the chefs basically, everything gets from over there. And then they have a very, very small, obviously this is an actual boat, yeah? This came from India. Uh, so. The, the only kitchen they have is this. Everything is cooked on charcoal. So if you want the lobster, it goes on the charcoal. And you get the smell of charcoal. It's not cheap, but it's good quality. So we only go for quality. Not volume, quality, yeah. So we have this restaurant, we have the Peacock restaurant. We have the uh, Albustan restaurant, which is our buffet restaurant, breakfast, lunch and dinner. We have then the pool bar. We have the Sky Lounge, we have the Edam. On the third floor, we also have the Business Class Lounge, which is for certain type of uh, guests. We have banquet. Banquet, we have three big rooms. We have the Alashimi, Dasman, and we have now Bubian also. And then we have small meeting room. We have about 12 of uh, small meeting rooms. How long have you been working with Radisson Chef? I am now 19 years with Radisson. I started my career with uh, Radisson in Russia. From Russia, I, went, I came to Kuwait the first time. Then from here, I went to Tunisia. Tunisia. Tunisia, I went to Abu Dhabi. Abu Dhabi to Dubai, Dubai to back to Kuwait. So all that was opening new hotels. Right. But the thing about Radisson is that, or all the hotels basically, is that if you've worked in one country, you can work in other countries. It's easy for you to get into uh, other It's easier to get transfer, yeah. It's yeah. easier to get transfers, yeah. That's good. Let's work <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's like your ticket to other hotels. We have a quality, right. And we actually now, because before we were not linked, everything, all Radisson were at separate regions. Separate. So Middle East, Africa, Turkey and Europe were one region, the MEA. And then there was the uh, South America, then there was Asia, then there was Pan Pacific. Now we are one company. But like for example, uh, India, we have, I think, this year, end of this year, till the end of next year, we have 28 opening. Wow. 28 wow. new hotels. Only in India. India. Chef, have you come from a family of chefs also? Yes, I have. Uh, my wow. mom was a chef. Uh, I've got two brothers. Both my brothers are chefs also. Wow. So in all hotels. Chef. Wow. <laughs> One is in, uh, it's more like uh, a very fashionable restaurant in uh, close to Japan, and the other one has got his own restaurant, which is more like Italian restaurant in France. Do you say it's a fight when you get to a table and prepare your own dishes? <laughs> uh, that's right. You know, when, when, when we meet, when all my brother meets, and when it's very rare, I mean, I think the last time uh, we were all together, it's probably about seven, eight years ago. Wow. Uh, because we're all over, so all over. it's... Uh, and then uh, it's my mom who was cooking, yeah. It's still the best uh, <laughs> food. Yeah. Chef, question. What is the hardest part of being a chef? Hardest part? <laughs> I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> so you know what it is? The hardest part is very simple. It's especially when you're abroad. The hardest part is missing 
uh, all the big events or all the big family uh, events. That's what I miss the most, yeah. Yes. So it's it's missing uh, the birthday of someone, it's missing a wedding, it's, like it's you, missing... You know, uh, you're a family of chefs, so how do you get together? Uh, it's uh, Skype, you know, it's magic. We have a lot of challenge every day. Yeah. And I think it's, uh, you know, you just have to take them when they come and uh, not over pressure. <laughs> and um, what is uh, an example of, uh, of the worst thing that had happened inside a kitchen? No, oh, yeah. uh, nothing has happened oh. bad. Uh, <laughs> no, yeah, there's a lot of cuts, yeah? There are a lot of burns and cuts. <laughs> That's uh, that's Very quite insane. that's quite a common thing, yeah. yeah. Common thing. It's normal, so yeah. a finger going off missing, it's. <laughs> but is it compensated? <laughs> when it comes to benefit, what benefits do you get from being a chef? Or I get a lot of pressure in the kitchen. In a group, yeah. Right. Uh, we have a fantastic team. I really have a great, great team, and that's where I get. That's the biggest thing. I mean, when I say okay, yes, uh, customers being happy. Uh, yes and no. I, I uh, my biggest thing is my uh, my team, really. It's uh, that they're happy. We have good fun together. We, we did a great job. You know, it's achieving our objectives. Uh, yes, of course, eventually it's a customer, but it's achieving that what we've been set to do. You know, we say okay, fine. We're gonna make a barbecue, and if it is a barbecue, and we say okay, we're gonna fix a target. I want 300 people every time we do a barbecue. And when we achieve that, that means we, we've done it, you know, and it's a, it's a sense of pride mm. for the team and for myself, of course. They can ask the other questions later when you yeah. reach there. Right. <laughs>
my idea of eating Italian food is in Italy, uh, under an olive tree, with a big wooden table, yeah. with a few, ta a few dishes Family. on the table, so Family. pasta, some simple grilled items, because they're very simple food also. Okay. Simple grilled items, mm -hmm. and then a lot of friends. A lot of wine. And a couple <laughs> of bottles of Chianti, yeah. yes. Asian, I'm not, I, I can't say too much about Asian food because I mean, I know Asian food to a certain limit. Okay. I know what I've learned around this part of the world. I've not really traveled much to Asia, apart from Thailand and uh, Singapore, yeah. a little bit in China. Asian Japanese, cuisine. I know, I, I know what I can do. Here it's Kuwaiti Japanese, so a lot of mayonnaise. Sushi with mayonnaise, yeah? Okay. Uh, so, Traditional, traditional Japanese, I'm no expert. Mediterranean is vague, eh? it's very large. Yeah. Mediterranean starts in Spain yes. and it goes all around France, Italy, the whole region. And then it goes across to uh, Croatia, Greece, and all yes. this. And then it comes obviously all in North Africa. Yes. So it, it starts from Morocco, uh, Algeria, Tunisia, uh, Libya, and it, it goes all the way then to Lebanon. Mm -hmm. right. so, and Istanbul, so it also all the way to Turkish. So Mediterranean is huge. What it is, it's three products or three types. Okay. It's olive oil, mm -hmm. it's uh, a lot of herbs okay. and great vegetables. But vegetables like, yeah, it's tomato, olives, peppers, okay. zucchini. So that's what it is, you know. There's no potatoes there in that part of the world. It doesn't grow there. So it should not be in Mediterranean. I see. So it's all, if you, want to stay true to a cooking, okay. you cook what grows there. What makes a good chef? The qualities of a good A passionate chef. person. Okay. I use each the person according to their dedication and their, uh, it doesn't matter the nationality. Uh, as long as you're passionate and you really want to really, you really want, want to develop yourself, there's great people in every na in nation. So chef, on behalf of C Network and Philippine Chef Society, thank you very much. For Hi, my name is Ricky Laksa. I'm the uh, project manager for uh, C Network, that's Community Events and Entertainment. And for those who have never availed the classes we are giving currently right now, uh, basic pastry and baking. Um, then also we're going to be having the advanced courses after that. We also have the international cuisine where you're being introduced to four different international cuisines like uh, uh, French, Italian, Japanese and Arabic. And of course you have additional courses that go with it, like fruit carving and vegetable carving and butchery, anything that is essential that you could use personally and also for your business if you want to start something. And uh, soon we'll also be uh, introducing our caregiving courses, which I think is going to be very beneficial for people who might want to go change their, uh, their status when it comes to work, uh, bring up a little bit more when it comes to the sources of their income. Yeah, I mean locally, and if they want to source out the job as well for the abroad. So why don't you go start and liking our page? My name is Ricky R. Laksa at uh, Facebook, or you may also call me at um, 650-19059 or 65 657-89555. And uh, again, uh, C Network is here uh, to provide you with the best education, the best experience you could ever have. It's not just education, it's also about fun. And at the same time, it's about opening new opportunities for your life. Thank you very much. Maraming salamat po.